Good morning, my fellow Canadians. I haven't done a haven't done a post in a while. There's so much to unpack in what's going on in Canada these days. Oh my God, it's just uh, globally we got. I think the primary to me is the Ukraine war. But uh, what's going on in this country with the Liberal government is just that would be hours of video content. This one is another one about firearms, guns, evil, nasty guns, terrible, evil guns. I know how effective the anti-firearms lobby has been in conjunction, of course, with this liberal government and the uh, willing prostitutes from the media pushing their agenda. I mean, anybody who owns firearms or anybody who follows the whole firearms debate is aware of how skewed it is and how much basically garbage propaganda is being pushed out to the Canadian public. We all know this, okay? I had it brought home to me a while ago. I ran into a friend, longstanding, an acquaintance more so perhaps. He reads the Toronto Star. Now, he's been a lifelong subscriber. He's like a year younger than me. He's 72. He believes the star. Now, for people, anybody watching this, who, if you're not from Toronto, the Toronto star is probably the most skewed, lib pro-liberal, biased newspaper in Toronto. Uh, the Globe and Mail is bad enough, but uh, the star is just... I, I loathe and detest that paper. I don't consider them journalists. They've uh, bought the government money, the bailout, and they push the Liberal Party line and demonize the conservative position. Basically, anything the Liberals say is uh, gospel coming down from God from the mountain to the Liberal, to the Toronto Star. So it, to me, that paper is good for birdcage liner or doggy, uh, doggy potty training. Or fire starter because it's thicker than the Toronto Sun. Anyways, he's been a lifelong reader. We were catching up on old news, what's been going on, things like this. I didn't want to get into it, but he brought up firearms, knowing that I am a shooter, hunter, um, used to be a collector. I've got over 55 years experience with firearms, okay? So, of all types. Everything from fully automatic in the military to uh, old antique muzzle loaders. Well, he brought up firearms. And I told him, I says, I don't want to get into this. Because when I get into discussions with people who are not, very often not familiar with the firearms community, I hear so much garbage. It's frustrating. I pointed out. I have a debate, if I'm talking to somebody about firearms, first off, you have to have an open mind. If you don't know anything, be willing to learn, be willing to listen. I bring up facts, data, personal experience, and research, and logic. Okay, this is what I bring to the table when I discuss just about anything. Okay. Most of the anti-firearms rhetoric I get back is based on emotionalism and belief. Belief. And I told him this. I said, I don't want to get into this because for those very reasons, most of the counter arguments I hear or counter rebuttals are based on, on, on belief and emotionalism, not facts, not logic, not data. So we got into the discussion. I'm trying to educate him. Then I went over the line. I brought up the study in the U.S. This is the one that will make liberals' heads explode. Studies in the U.S., okay, and I'm not talking about NRA studies. I'm talking about factual glean from the factual news services around the United States. Even the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, so this is not like a pro-NRA institution, the Center for Disease Control brought out the fact that 
armed citizens either stop a crime in progress or prevent a crime from occurring anywhere between half a million to three million times per year. Okay? Half a million to three million times per year where a responsible armed citizen has intervened and either prevented a crime from occurring or stopped a crime in progress. Now, I read this, I had to go over this, and now I have seen this confirmed by several other different sources, okay? So, this is not a pro-gun fantasy. Well, I brought that up. And his first response was, I, I can't believe that. There we go. And I said, okay, discussion's over. You can't believe that. You have no facts or evidence to rebut this. There was no, hmm, can I, I'll do some research and get back to you. None of that. I can't believe that. And I said, there you go. I said, I cannot argue with a belief. I cannot debate a belief. Right? How can you debate a belief? If you believe something, an atheist is arguing with a, a theologian, okay, about there is no God. So you don't believe there is a God. I do believe there is a God. Neither, there's no common ground. People who dismiss the existence of God, absolutely, you cannot convince them that God exists. It's a belief. You cannot debate a belief. So I brought up the fact, the other common claim from the anti-firearms group, more guns equals more gun crime. I saw the interview in Toronto, man on the street interview, and they interviewed one moron, and his thing was exactly that. Well, I don't know a lot about firearms, but I do know, not believe, I do know this. More guns equals more gun crime. That was what he said. He knows this. Now, of course, people, again, who have done any research or studies, I was reading the most heavily armed, the greatest incidence of private ownership of firearms in the world is the United States of America. I've heard crazy figures. I've heard anywhere up to 800 million firearms privately owned, okay, which I see is very possible. Collectors, uh, dedicated shooters, gun nuts, if you wish. Yeah, guys got uh, four, five, six more firearms, whole collections, rooms. Uh, I mean, at one point I had, what, 12 firearms? You know, myself. All legal, of course. But the point I'm trying to make, and this guy was absolutely adamant about the fact that more guns equals more gun crime. Whereas the most heavily armed country in the world ranks in murders by firearms 111th. Now, one would think by that logic, the more firearms, more deaths in homicides, the United States ranks in firearm murders 111th in the world rankings. That's stats per 100,000. Well, when I brought this up, the gentleman I was debating said, well, I, I can't believe that. There we go. And I said, okay, you know what, Sparky? I says, discussion's over. I cannot debate. I cannot argue a belief. Well, no, I'm not arguing from a standpoint of belief. This is what he told me. What do you mean? You just said you can't believe it. You don't accept what I told you because you can't believe it. And now you say you're not arguing from a standpoint of belief. You're not debating this from a standpoint of fact. Now, mind you, we have been drinking, okay? But still, I got out because I was starting to get steamed. I didn't want to lose my temper, so I just ended the debate, the conversation. But it strikes me there how effective the propaganda has been in brainwashing people who don't know firearms, know nothing about firearms, don't know anybody who owns firearms, have never shot a firearm, have no association at all with the firearms community, but they know that if you ban handguns, the crime rate's going to drop. They know this. Now, all the evidence, to the contrary, they know this. I'd like to bring up, and I hate doing this because, as a rule, I uh, 
when I hear people start throwing out numbers, I hear, and the stats say that blah, 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 and I start tuning out. But I had to look it up because I wanted to present some actual, actual numbers from Statistics Canada. Now, this goes back to 2021 because they don't have, I, I didn't see the stats for 2022. 2021, there were 297 homicides by firearms in Canada. 297, bear that in mind, homicides by Canada. And of that, 46% were gang-related. Okay, so almost half were gang-related. I'd like to bring up another stat. 2020, in Canada, there were 1,725 vehicular deaths. 1,725 vehicular deaths in Canada. 436 of those were the result of speeding, excessive speed. 303 of those were impaired. Now, 303, the lower figure, impaired driving, we lost, okay? 297 homicides by firearms. Versus 436 deaths from speeders and 303 from impaired. Well, before you go after firearms, Let's have laws against speeding. Wait. We do. Okay, okay. So let's bring out laws against impaired driving. It's against the law to drive impaired. Let's bring out laws that make that crime. Uh-oh, wait. We do. The point to this is, legislate anything you want. People who break the law will break the law. People who don't break the law won't break the law. It's that simple. The firearms community is among the most heavily regulated, stringently observed and overwatched communities in the entire country, and yet we're one of the most responsible, one of the least criminal of all organizations in Canada, all communities. And yet, the papers go after them. The government's going after them. My poor country, you know, we used to be a nation of common sense. We used to be a nation where you were allowed to have a divergent viewpoint without being demonized or slagged or marginalized, or defunded. Those days will come back, I think, if we get a conservative government. But for now, I just wanted to bring this up about evil, nasty firearms. If you choose to debate firearms, educate yourself. If you think that the government overreach is draconian, arbitrary, Educate yourself and speak up about it. But whether you own a firearm, whether you know anybody who owns a firearm, whether you have no intention of owning firearms, it's not about firearms. It's about fairness. That's all we ask. Fairness. You bring out legislation that restricts transportation use, whatnot. Let them be based on logic, not emotionalism. Let them be based on fact, not fantasy, not political pressure. All we ask is that this be looked at fairly, objectively, reasonably. Is that, and if that's too much to ask for my country, for Canada, then this country's in a lot of trouble, <laughs> as if anybody had any doubt. Anyways, there's my little daily rant. So... My fellow Canadians, have a good day.